All right, so we will get it kicked off here. Um, thank you all of you for joining, really appreciate it. Um, I'm sure that this uh, isn't uh, your first Zoom call of the day for many of you. I know that this is a platform that many of us are living uh, on at the moment. So I hope all of you um, are, are safe and well, um, and, and thanks again for joining. So. Um, as I mentioned earlier, my name is Shay Reckner. I work for Realstone Systems. I'm here in our uh, Troy, Michigan um, showroom in our warehouse. This is our main uh, HQ or headquarters. So today I'm going to be taking you through um, what I think is our um, probably our, our most fun line. Um, it's called the Tempered Collection. And it is a line that we uh, launched a couple of years back, and it's just continued to gain popularity um, uh, and really a name for itself in the industry because it's such a unique product line. So um, it's not a super technical presentation. It's really visual. It's, a, it's such a beautiful, uh, unique product and aesthetic to look at. So um, moving forward, I will kick it off with uh, Aaron Adams. Aaron. Um, was the vision behind this collection. Uh, she is the designer. She um, designed exclusively for Ann Sachs for a number of years. She's very well known in the industry. I'm sure many of you have heard of her. Um, and we are lucky enough to uh, get to have her as part of the uh, presentation today. So Erin, um, thanks for joining. Thanks for you know taking the time to be on with us. Um, if you could maybe just walk us through your um, I guess, introduction to uh, the, the factory that you worked with for this, this line and your vision behind it. Okay, great, Shay, and hi, everyone. Um, I'm um, talking from Austin, Texas right now, and um, nice to see all of you guys. So let's see. So um, first of all, I used to have a glass mosaic factory and um, my products were exclusive with Ansax Talon Stone for about 13 and a half years and I um, closed my factory down about seven years ago to just really focus in, on developing um, product with factories all over the world and um, this product came to me, Vineet, who owns the factory in India, I just, I really wanted to go to India, and um, I met him at, at Coverings one year, and his product was, um, he was already kind of starting this, um, this process with the glazed stone, but the colors were far more, um, how do I say, garish, <laughs> and, and he, he asked me to come to India to help him kind of develop these products. And I thought, hey, yeah, I'll go to India. So um, so I went to India and I was in his showroom. And again, he was doing a lot of leafing and gold and then resin coated on the sandstone. And I was looking around the showroom and I was like, we need to calm this down somehow. And and I guess someone once told me that I'm a, um, I, I deconstruct products. I kind of take them to a more simple place, um, even though my, my aesthetic is very modern. Um, but I, I um, so I was in his office and, and I was kind of looking around like I don't really I'm not inspired yet and then there was a little piece about there was a little one by one with a little bit of paint and a li little um, resin coat over the sandstone and I asked him what is that and he said oh no that's a mistake and I'm like oh no 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 this is exactly what we want to do so in his office that day I set up a plastic table put plastic all over it, had his assistants come, and I started, and I said, please help me mix colors and bring some of the sandstone to me. And so, and I had white jeans on that day because I didn't realize I was just going to get my hands dirty right there in his office. His office ended up being paint splattered like all over the place, but fortunately we had plastic everywhere. And um, that whole day, 
because in India, I mean, I love their color sense, but for a tile, it wasn't, it was too bright of colors. And so um, I kept having to say, warmer, warmer, warmer. And it kept getting brighter and I was like, warmer. And then, so I actually have a picture of my jeans um, from that day and they're just like paint splattered everywhere. And that's how we began developing this tempered line was it was what we thought was a mistake and ended up becoming um, a beautiful product. And what I love about the product, especially like here in Austin, I have uh, quite a few private clients and they love kind of the farmhouse look, but want a modern, um you know style to it and here we use a lot of natural stone and um a lot of um and, and just like i guess in real stone with the with, with such a beautiful collaboration with real stone is this is taking a stone and yet adding another element to it and another texture to it and adding a little color to it and um it just it it's it creates a different kind of field tile, but it still has this beautiful organic quality to it. And so it's it's adding this kind of elegant, sophisticated look, but still creating a very, um, you know, organic, organic feel. And as Shay said, it is, it's just now really catching on everywhere. So um, that's, uh, that's a little bit of the history of it and um i know that my own look you know i my own look especially with some of the other products that i'm developing with uh, real stone systems they're simple modern but there's a real timeless feeling to it and that's such a big part of of my aesthetic and then like the leather he was doing these like big leather planks before and I was like, just like bring them in. Let's, 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 it, it, it's about, I guess subtlety is what it's about. There, there's, or, or maybe it's subdued is a better word. And it just creates a texture and it becomes architectural and not necessarily decorative. It becomes part of the architecture. And I know with, with my own clients, um, it drives me crazy when the wall is just a little bit decorative and it's not because I'm trying to sell more tile, but I want it to look architectural. I want it to look like it's been a part of the architecture and a part of the interior rather than the facade of the interior, if that makes sense. So I and I really think that the tempered stone does that. It it brings a decorative element, decorative and architectural element um, to the the product. And you know we're developing still some bold colors, but there's a lot of subtle colors too. There's some very simple colors. There's two different sandstones that we're doing. I think it's we're doing the natural sandstone, which is the base. And then we add a little dye to it and then the urethane, it, or it's a resin, it's a resin coating over it. And there's really nothing else out there um, like it. So um, that's what I have to say. So if anyone has any questions and they wanna put it in their chat room, I'll be here for the entire presentation. And um, thanks you guys. Thank you, Erin. Thank you. Always so, it, it's so fun on a personal level um, uh, to hear the, the back story um, uh, to, to how these, these products are created. So thank you. All right. So um, I am going to just walk you guys through some of the different, um, the different tiles within this tempered series. So, uh, like Erin said, it goes from very vibrant colors to more subdued offerings. Um, we have a lot of blues, uh, kind of off-white hues as well. So um, it is uh, natural stone. Um, it's the, the base of these tiles is either a black uh, limestone or a tan uh, sandstone. Um, 
And it's divided into three categories. So we have metallics, glaze, and leather. Um, and the leather kind of is the, the big pop. Uh, lots of people ask real leather, and um, it is. It's a pretty cool product. So I'll show you some, some images here in a couple of minutes. But um, for the glaze and the metallic series, uh, you have that natural stone base. Um, and you have, for a metallic, uh, the foil and then a resin glaze. And then for the glaze series, which I'll take you through as well, um, you just have that resin glaze over the top of it. So um, what makes this product line so unique and so different from uh, the different products that you know, are out in the industry, like ceramic, porcelain, things like that, glass, tile, um, it's a natural stone at its core, right? So every tile is, or every stone piece is unique. Um, there's different clefts and edges. Um, so, you know, again, not one tile is exactly the same. And that kind of adds to that, you know, textured, um, what we like to call uh, an inconsistent consistency up on the wall. So um, I will move forward and take you through uh, some of the uh, metallic offerings that we have. This here that you're looking at is one of our more popular um, profiles. Um, we've had a lot of sample requests for it uh, uh, past couple of weeks. It's called Stardust. That's a tan um, sandstone with a metallic foil uh, and a white glaze. So um, these tiles don't have to be grouted. It's not necessary. If they're going to go somewhere like in a, a backsplash or in a bathroom, you would probably want to use grout with them. Uh, we always recommend a non-sanded grout um, because if you use a sanded grout, you could see some scratching on the face of the tiles. Um, but again, if it's going on just like a feature wall, um, uh, an accent uh, to a room, you don't need to grout it. Um, all different types of ways to lay out these, these tiles as well. Um, the, the sizing, they are uh, um, uh, three by seven size. So uh, four pieces make up a square foot. And I'm gonna take you to an installation image here that you see. Um, Again, just beautiful, adds to the texture of this room. Um, really incredible. Here's another metallic, it's called Ore, uh, laid out in a really fine herringbone product. Um, and again, if you look at each of these tiles, um, kind of step back from the, the pattern, uh, you see you know, e each piece is, is different and unique in its own way, which is really just, here it is installed in a backsplash. We've had a number of recent installations actually with uh, the temper tile uh, used in kitchen backsplashes. Um, this image, I will tell you, is visualized. We used it for our brochure. Um, so you would want, if it's going in a backsplash like this in a kitchen, uh, probably want to use grout with that and not standard grout. Uh, Gunmetal, this is another cool, kind of uh, a very metallic uh, uh, option. You can see it's laid up kind of offset on a nice feature wall in a bathroom. Hey, in a Shay, linear can, layout. Shay, can I, can I um, uh, butt in for sure. a second? Okay, so. Go ahead. I, um, thanks, thanks so much. What I love about the tempered tile and what a lot of our clients love about it is look at how all of the all of the the um the surfaces are are so clean you know it, it's a it's a really great transitional product for where we used to be where everything was so gray and um very slick surfaces and how the the transition and now we're transitioning into a little bit more of an organic um, design sense. You know, people are kind are kind of moving away from completely the slick modern interiors to a little bit more of te adding texture. So the tempered stone has been a wonderful, wonderful transition between that slickness of um, 2019 to now where we're kind of moving into and and with these pictures and in these interiors it really shows that beautiful transition so you can get a little bit of this organic touch 
with still, you know, clients that ah. want the modern interiors. So thanks. Thanks, Erin. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it just adds such texture and depth to a space. Really serves almost as an um, artwork, I, I feel, on a wall. Uh, so here's kind of a fun color. This is a ruby. Um, I, I heard of one installation of this particular tile. Uh, it went into someone's garage, uh, car garage, which is pretty awesome, Corvette garage with ruby tile. So if you're on the call and that was you, we'd love to see pictures. Um, but again, this is another metallic. It has that foil with that beautiful, vibrant red glaze to it. Um, I have an installation image uh, a little bit later on in the slides that show it um, uh, in another bar setting as well, uh, installed vertically actually around a curved, uh, curved radius. Here's another op uh, offering in the metallic line. It's called Pyrate, the black and gold tile. Um, really beautiful installation. This looks like it's in a hotel lobby. And then we've got pale gold. You asked me, it's not very pale, it's very vibrant. Um, and if I could take you, I would show you that uh, I have the pale gold actually installed in my office behind this wall here in a herringbone layout. Um, and it's just incredible. It's, it's, it's um, you know, seeing a picture on a screen really doesn't do uh, this product line justice. It's uh, the, the, the texture. Um, and I've heard from designers too, when they hold a piece in their hands and they run their fingers over the, the tile, um, it's smoother than they think because of that depth and texture that's beneath that resin glaze. So it almost um, uh, plays with your eyes a little bit. So with all of these tiles, um, we do offer bullnose trim accessory, um, accessories as well. So depending on the stone type, it'll be either a limestone or a sandstone. Um, and these trim pieces, they're uh, uh, three quarters of an inch, um, so 0.75 by 11, 0.75, um, and they come glazed metallic and the leather offerings. So we have that um, for, for all of the series, which is a really nice add-on, um, great to finish off a wall um, if you are going to specify or utilize any of these products. So here we have the glaze series. Um, what you're looking at here, this is our marine tile. This is one of my favorites. Um, I just think the color is just incredible and vibrant. Um, I feel like I'm looking at the ocean from overhead. Uh, but it is a tan um, sandstone with that resin uh, glaze over the top of it. Here we have a fog tile. Uh, this is a black limestone with the resin glaze. We've actually seen a lot of installations and um, sample request applications for this this series as well as some of the other blue tones um, because they're a bit more subdued, maybe not as um, vibrant in color, so they work in more applications. Here's the fog installed vertically um, offset in a corporate setting. Here's that marine in a herringbone. And again, like I mentioned, no tile is the same. Such depth up, uh, such uh, texture, um, and when you step back from it, it all blends in so beautifully. Here's a snowdrift tile, which is fitting for, um, if any of you are in Michigan right now, um, looking outside your window, it's currently snowing mid-April. There's a beautiful application of that in a bath. Um, hey, and then Jen, we have a blue opal. I mean, Shay. Hey, Shay. Um, yes. Can we go back to the that uh, pic, the bathroom picture real quick? So I just sure. did. Right we, we did. We, we don't have the installs yet because it's being. I think it, the house is being finished. But we did the the fog in the shower, and then we used the. Uh, we had the custom order, but we custom ordered the hex tile, which you guys will hopefully be showing, and we did that in the back of the um, in the back of the niche, in the the showers, and in niches in the bathroom, which I can't wait to get photographs. But it really looked great because we still used the fog um, 
um, coloration, but we just kind of transitioned the back of the niche with uh, the hex in the fog. So there's all sorts of different ways to, you know, apply this product. And again, it worked so well. It, this was like a Spanish um, home in Lubbock, Texas. And it just, it really added so much dimension to the bathroom. Thanks. Yeah, I have um, uh, part of, uh, in a couple of slides, the hexagon and some of the strips that we can, you know, you can add on to the standard subway tile series, which Erin said is great to go hand in hand. So here's that blue opal. And then storm. So again, like I mentioned, lots of blues um, seems to be a very popular uh, color for this series. And then sea foam, and this is kind of a fun layout. Our marketing team did this, um, kind of varying squares. You can really get creative with these tiles. It's not just your standard layout. And here it is in the dining room uh, in a, in a um, herringbone pattern. So here's uh, an up-close image of those trim pieces again um, in the glaze series. You see that glaze extends over the edges as well. So now onto the leather section. Uh, I, I've gotten this question uh, quite a few times. Is it real leather? Um, uh, what animal does it come from? It, it is a natural leather. It's a real leather. Um, it is natural leather that is uh, heat pressed, stretched uh, very thin, and then heat pressed over the limestone itself. So um, for those of you who have seen it in person, it really is, it's breathtaking. You run your fingers over the tiles and they have uh, such depth, such texture to them. Um, we've got three colors in this series as of right now, uh, more to come. It's really been gaining some, um, uh, significant popularity in the marketplace because there really isn't anything like this out there. Um, so there's this black leather. Uh, we have one um, that was named Corona. Obviously that was uh, before what's currently happening. Um, a really beautiful rich brown. And I have an installation image here of an accent wall in a home. So obviously with the leather tiles, um, with glazed and metallic, you can grout those. With a natural leather, you don't want to grout them. Um, you just want them to be dry stacked because obviously it's natural leather. So um, uh, I have a grandmother who had a, um, and some of you might too, uh, a, a living room that was a looky no touchy room. And so whenever I have designers I'm working with who want to specify this product line, I always say it's, it's, it will look best in the long run if it's somewhere where um, it's a looky no touchy right? Um, because it's a natural leather. If you run your fingers over it um, or something sharp, it could scratch. So those are just some things to keep in mind. Um, but really such a, just a gorgeous um, focal point of a room. Here it is in the black in a, a chevron or a herringbone um, pattern. You can see that depth and texture to it. An accent wall. And then we have the Robusto, a darker, more of a, a deep chestnut color. Um, I actually just found, and I have an image here in a couple of slides, um, a new application that um, is done in a multifamily uh, uh, building um, that I just found yesterday that I'm really excited to show all of you. Um, it shows the beauty of this product on a large scale wall. So in addition to the leather tiles, we offer um, uh, some of these little kind of cool accent pieces. I have one right here as well. Um, they're just small add-ons. Uh, they can really, you know, kind of jazz up the wall if you're going to specify the leather series. Um, and they are on our website and we can sample them if you're ever interested. Here's another up-close look. We blended the Corona with the Robusto tiles. And then here are the different trim options for that leather line. All right, so in addition to the 
standard subway tiles. We also offer um, a selection of mosaics and then strips. So this here is the Stardust mosaic. Uh, they come on 12 by 12 sheets on mesh. Um, we have the Stardust. We have the sea salt blend hex, and I've got a better up close image right here that you can see. Um, <clears throat> this vignette that we created, here, I'll, this, this one's a better image of it. Um, we, um, for the grout for these series, because it has, you know, kind of a glimmer and a shimmer to the, to the stone, um, there's grout out there. We, we love working with Bostic. They have a, um, grout series where they add crushed glass to the, to the grout mix. Um, and that blends so beautifully with these tiles. So, um, again, we're happy to, you know, offer recommendations for, you know, what type of grout to use. Um, but that's been my personal favorite to recommend with this series. Here's another up close of that Stardust blend. And these come ungrouted, um, obviously, on those uh, 12 by 12 sheets. And then we've got strips um, in a couple of different colors coming in that 12 by 12 series again. But just nice add-ons, like Erin said, you know, to, to complement those subway tiles, um, add on, a, you know, a, um, a, a different size and, and texture to a room. And there it is in an install in a kitchen. All right, so um, this is a visual product. Uh, I don't want to bore you with, with talking too much about it. I really, you know, um, all of our products are such, uh, are so visual um, and bring such beauty to a room. So I'm going to be quiet and um, show you some recent uh, real life applications of the uh, Tempered series. Now this is a little bit blurry. Um, I was able to pull this one um, off of a multifamily website yesterday, um, but this is our gun metal uh, installed in a herringbone pattern um, and frame. Just, uh, I wish it was a little bit cleaner, but, uh, or um, more focused so you could see the beauty of it. Um, but really just an incredible installation. And then here's that leather wall that I referred to earlier. So with this install, they actually mix two of our products, our frost panels, um, and then our storm uh, tempered in the middle, kind of as like a piece of artwork, if you will, up on, above the mantle. It's a really fun, beautiful uh, fog blend hex installed in a kitchen backsplash just brings some more color to, to a clean, clean white uh, design. And then the marine um, flipped vertically. And then the storm installed in a bathroom. Um, we will talk about this here in the next slide or two of uh, installation recommendations for this line, but this is, um, there's no shower head. This isn't a shower. It's uh, just a, a freestanding tub. Um, so they were able to use the, the tile and the, um, on that wall. And here's the up close image of one of the uh, restaurants that had used the Ruby tile uh, with some feature lighting underneath it. So you can really see that depth and texture to each tile, which is really cool. All right, so um, I want to be mindful of everyone's time, and I know we're at the 1230 mark and supposed to run about half an hour. So I'll run through, um, you know, these are some of the questions that I, 
I get asked often from uh, designers and some of our A&D partners um, about this product line. So can the tiles be used for flooring? Um, they cannot, unfortunately. They are um, textured and they're, they're not rated for flooring, uh, as well as for exterior. We do not recommend them go outside. Uh, these, these tiles um, are best suited for interior dry application. Um, and kind of going off of that, will the coloring of these tiles fade over time? Um, as long as they're not exposed to sunlight or weathering effects, um, you don't have to worry about that, that the, the resin glaze will not change in color. Um, one that we get quite often is about wet applications, um, bathrooms, pools, backsplashes. So um, if it is going to be installed in um, a bathroom or in a kitchen, uh, we would recommend it not be submerged in water. Um, where the water might be treated with uh, chemicals. Um, that's not recommended for this line. Um, somewhere um, kind of offset from where it would be submerged in, in water is what we would recommend for, for uh, both glaze, metallic, and obviously for the leather. The leather um, needs to be in a, a dry interior application. Um, how should the uh, tiles be maintain maintained? Um, you can clean them with just a dry cloth. We wouldn't recommend doing any type of chemical cleaner on them. Um, with the leather series, you could use um, like a leather polishing agent um, and a dry, uh, non-abrasive cloth as well to clean them. Um, how should they be installed? Um, we just recommend a, uh, your standard um, uh, tile adhesive. Just lay it up like you would a regular tile. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, for the grout, we would recommend non-sand uh, non grout. Can they be cut? And I know a lot of the installation images that um, you've seen, uh, the, the tiles were cut. They absolutely can be cut on the job site. Um, uh, they won't um, uh, crumble or you know, diminish in, in the look or the aesthetic look of them. Uh, we would recommend a, a non-tooth diamond blade saw for those as well. So again, all of these questions, um, and if you have any more, we can um, send you the specification guide, installation recommendations, all that good stuff um, after the presentation. And then uh, one of the other um, uh, frequently asked questions that we get is about fireplaces, because it really would be such a great product to use um, around a fireplace. And um, because of the resin component to it, we don't recommend it go on a fireplace um, surround um, these, these tiles, again, are, are um, best when they're in um, ambient uh, room temperature. So uh, nowhere too hot, um, nowhere wet, um, just kind of an interior uh, product line. So I have just a couple of different fun layouts um, that our marketing team put together um, of different tiles together. Um, and palettes as well. I think, Erin, you pulled this one, and I took it from your Instagram. I love the uh, different textures of the fabric with uh, the um, snow dress tile. Here's the Stardust and Ruby intermix in the chevron. And that's a little bit blurry, but that's a few different tiles together. So really, I mean, you can get super creative with these tiles. These are a couple of the different blue tones um, combined together. And then here's just a fun layout of some of our different lines. Um, and I'm sure, you know, at some point here in the next couple of weeks, we'll have a presentation on our slant stitch collection, which Erin uh, also designed. Um, but, uh, you know, we have, we have so much fun uh, as a company kind of and mixing and matching uh, all of our different product offerings that you see here. So um, on that note, because this line has been so popular um, past a uh, couple of years, and we're just seeing more and more specifications roll in, um, we want to offer more products, more colors, more colorways, um, that are, you know, we're getting requests about on a daily basis. So here are some of the, um, the colors and the profiles that are coming soon. Um, obviously with the current
current condition. Um, the factory in India is shut down, um, but um, you know, once it's back up and running, uh, we're really excited to get more of these products and bring them in stock and offer them to all of you because um, they're just really incredible and such a nice add-on to the collection. So here's a leather. This is a white leather on a black um, limestone. A very vibrant blue, kind of like a royal blue. We don't have names for them yet either. Uh, here's a, a metallic, kind of like an emerald green glaze. Here's another white leather, kind of a, a white washed. Here's another uh, beautiful kind of a gold foil uh, with a sky blue glaze. And I really love this, this image because you can see that, you know, the, the, the texture, again, I know I've used this word, the texture and the depth of these tiles, but, you know, everyone is just so unique and different. And then this is really up close, but um, we've only had a couple of these tiles left to work with, so um, I apologize, but it's a, um, it's a beautiful, kind of like a blush pink over a tan sandstone. Um, I get a lot of requests out in the field for a pink tile. So um, hopefully it's still something that's trending when we uh, uh, bring it in. So that's all I have for you guys today. Um, our website, uh, we're really excited. It's a brand new, it's um, very user friendly. It's just realstone.com. If you want to go straight to the tempered series, it's realstone.com backslash tempered. Um, otherwise, go on our website. We have products, uh, products tab, uh, an inspiration tab, and resources. So um, everything that you need um, uh, should be easily accessible through that website. We also have, um, you know, all, our reps in each of your regions that are more than well, uh, willing to, uh, you know, get on a Zoom call with you, um, help you out with samples, any questions that you might have. So. Um, thank you everyone for taking the time. I really appreciate it and uh, stay safe.